teachers, I wanted to jump on here again and do another guide note video, but I wanted to just focus this one. I kind of wanted to zero in on how I use guide notes in the very beginning when I'm introducing the staff. So I saw some questions um, on a couple of the Facebook pages about students um, struggling, um, students new to the staff struggling in online lessons. So I thought that I would just um, pop on here and do a quick video in case it would be helpful to some teachers out there. Um, all the things I'm going to show you today are things actually that I did in my online lessons, or I'm sorry, in my in-person lessons. So I went on all online um, a few years ago after we um, relocated um, and I was too far away to teach my students. So most of them came with me as online students. So, um, so all of these things were things that I did in in-person lessons. Um, with most students, you know, some students just understand things right away. So for my students who just sort of got it, we didn't go through this whole process. Um, for students who struggled on the staff, these things worked really well in person. Um, and then once I went to online teaching, I discovered that these things, because they were visual and they used some props, they translated really well to all online teaching. Um, and so I, um, oops, there went my phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> I always turn my ringer off and then I forget. Um, I turn it back on and then I forget to turn it back off. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. So <laughs> um, all of these things um, translate well to online teaching. So I think they give um, students some really concrete markers. Um, so things are uh, more clear visually and they translate well from the keyboard to the staff. Um, and students can stay with these tools as long as they need to. Some students just need them a week or two and then they're like, I've got this. Um, other students um, where the staff seems a little bit more confusing for whatever reason, um, these can really give them um, some tools to help them be less frustrated and be more successful. And I just let them sit with these tools for as long as they need to. They will eventually not need them. Um, and you know they're not going to spend the next three years doing some of the things I'm going to show you today so they'll eventually transition out of this so <clears throat> let me show you um, so the first thing that I do uh, before we even play any music and we might even do this ahead of actually having a lesson uh, we would do this ahead of actually having a lesson on the staff sometimes um, is I will just introduce these guide notes. So we'll talk about the treble clef being the G clef, the bass clef being the F clef, so that's that's probably a whole nother video, but <clears throat> um, I'll have them put um, the blue magic note in the belly of the treble clef um, and remind them that this is the G clef because there's the curl of the G and then there's treble G. And then remind them again that this was the bass clef, F clef, and the F is between the dot dot. So again, these are all Music Mind Games materials and tools, um, and you can find out more about that at musicmindgames.com. There's lots of information there. Um, there's videos for some of the games. Um, there's subscriptions to see all of the videos in the curriculum. So there's just a plethora of information there. Um, and then, of course, there's a store where you can buy all these materials. Um, <clears throat> I should clarify, though, these materials do not come magnetized. So I think my videos probably, I've said that somewhere before, but I've magnetized all of these things to use online. So anyway, so we have treble G, bass F, and middle C. So at first I would just practice having them put these on the staff. So my students actually have these materials at home um, as part of something called a puppy pack that has all these materials for students to purchase. Um, but if they didn't have this, <clears throat> you could easily just print staff paper. Um, the Susan Paradis site has a big grand staff um, you could print out one of those and they can write them big like this. Um, and and the, the benefit of them writing them out like that is they can keep that at the piano so they can see that and keep that as reference. Um, so that's a really good idea. Um, and I even have some of my students do that who have these materials because it's a lot to get everything out every practice. So sometimes I'll have them actually draw and then they can just have that picture there, <clears throat> um, or that guide there ne next to them on the piano. So. Um, so that's one way to use them. Then up here, you want to, of course, tie it into the piano keyboard. So we have middle C, treble G, and bass up. And what I like about this visual before we go to the piano is that they can see that bass up is below middle C. They can see that treble G is above middle C. And that is a really important distinction because lots of times they'll play that F because, of course, it feels comfortable for most students to play up 
um, in that higher range. So you can discuss that just from a visual of the keyword like that. So we'll spend a good amount of time um, just doing that. Then we um, will go to the actual piano keyboard. So I'm gonna take you over there. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna angle my camera down. There we go. So now you can see I have these colorful tabs. I forgot to show you these up front. Um, ah, they're on top of my piano. <laughs> so these, these are from the dollar store. Um, I don't know if the dollar store is still open um, or not, but these are easy enough to find. Some students will even, some of my students actually, I, I sent these in care packages to them um, when I started online teaching, but parents might have something that can stand in for these at home. Um, you might have something that will stand in for these at home, assuming the dollar store isn't open. The reason I like these at the dollar store is they have the red ones, and a lot of them don't have red um, that I found anyway. So they've got the red, the green, and the blue. And so what I do is I put these on my own piano for the student to see, um, and then I have them put them on their piano. So there we've got the middle C, the treble G, and the bass off. So it really gives them some concrete markers of where the notes are going to be that they're going to play when they get to their music. Um, because frankly, if you think about it, I'm going to move this camera angle <laughs> back up. Um, you know, a, a student, we sometimes forget it's so clear and easy to us, but a student is looking at this vast, you know, array of 88 keys and it's a little bit overwhelming to think about where they're supposed to be. And I think sometimes it just, there's just too much and it feels overwhelming um, and there's some frustration and panic that might set in at trying to figure all that out. So those colorful markers just really um, give them something to grasp onto really clearly. So then the next thing besides those colorful tabs, um, colored pencils. Erasable colored pencils are ideal. Um, again, if they don't have erasable colored pencils, you could just use regular colored pencils. You can use color crayons. Um, the only thing I wouldn't use were mar would be markers because they're too dark usually. Um, you could use highlighters, um, except there's not red highlight highlighters, so then you'd have to use maybe pink or something. So that would be another option. But I really like erasable colored pencils. Um, I let students write in their music with regular colored pencils for certain things in their method books. So if you're comfortable with that, you could use just a regular colored pencil. Or if I've used color crayons too, depending on what students have. So um, in the Piano Adventures method, of course, there's a middle C song and then they introduce treble G. But like here's just an example of songs that are using middle C and treble G. And what I would have students do before they play it is just go through, use this as a guide, they can look at this, and find the middle C's and just color them. So they could color all the middle C's. Some students will get great gratification from that. And that in itself is a learning experience because they're finding them and they're coloring in them. So if you're coloring them for them, then it doesn't become as useful. But if they're doing it themselves, I agree that it takes a little bit of time but they're really, really gaining something from that because with everyone they color, they found it and they learned about it. Um, and then the same thing with the treble G up here. You could just have them do the first note of each song if that's really, if you sense that's all the student needs. Um, if it's a student that things are a little less clear, go ahead and have them find all of them and color them. Again, this is a tool to use in the beginning to give them success. So. They're not going to, three years down the road, be coloring every treble G in their music. So it's not really about color coding. It's just about giving them some concrete markers. So, and the color just makes it fun, right? <laughs> um, and then, like another example, if you are familiar with this book, My Invention, where the base F gets introduced, so we color that green. And here I just have the first three colored. Um, that would be my go-to, and if a student needs more, or if there's a note, I don't know, maybe they're going along lovely and they get to here and they keep forgetting this one. Sometimes students will read up here, I'll have them mark that one. So use it where it's helpful. So um, then, what I also like about this is then when you start to add more notes, I mean, the whole purpose of guide notes is that, of course, they guide you to the other notes. You all know how that works. Um, if we get to Mr. Bluebird, what I'll have them do then is color all of the treble G's and all of the middle C's, and then they have these little guideposts throughout the piece. 
they can also see, if you've taught this piece before, that this is not a middle C, which is often what students will do there. So um, again, it just now puts a little check-in spot. They can kind of know and see if they're doing things correctly. So it really gives them a, a, an evalu evaluative tool. They can kind of be their own teacher and kind of check and see if they're doing things right. Um, and just a couple more examples. So again, getting to the dance band, the bass F comes back. Um, so I have them mark that. And then this treble G kind of pops out of nowhere and surprises some students, so we might do that. But again, it's this idea that they're going through before they play a piece. It's a very kind of really early score study, right? Um, and they're looking for these guide notes here and coloring them in. So again, like I said, the process of doing that takes a good amount of the lesson, but what it's gonna do is help them succeed when they practice. Um, and that process just builds such a solid foundation and they can stick with those things. So um, I even have students, um, you know, who will do lots of the, the color coding of the middle C's, treble G's and bass F's, and we'll kind of get away from it. Um, and then when we introduce more guide notes like bass C and treble C, we'll kind of start up that same marking um, and every once in a while, even as they get farther along, kind of mid-elementary, um, maybe a note will give them trouble and a guide note will help them. So sometimes we'll mark one here and there, like if it's a hand move, um, when they first start moving out of like starting hand positions, maybe their third finger moves to G or their thumb moves to G, we might mark that treble G. Um, so there are lots of um, little ways that this idea of, of using the colors um, to mark the notes will kind of carry through and help them through challenges that might come up later on um, when they're at a more advanced skill level. So, um, so it's really helpful. Um, I think that's everything. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I just, I think it makes it more, it makes it a little more interactive, a little bit more engaging. Um, and what kid doesn't like to color, right? <laughs> Um, and so it's just been really helpful. I've, I've had great success doing that with, um, with online students. So I hope that is helpful to you. If you have students um, who are just getting to the staff in online lessons, if that seems a little daunting, or if you have students that are um, struggling on the staff, I, I, I hope I said that right. Um, so students who are just getting to the staff and it's just a new experience to do it online, or students who might be just getting to the staff um, and they're struggling a little bit, so I hope um, I hope both of these things will be helpful to you. So, um, happy teaching, and I'll see you again. Bye bye.